Welcome to this Wisel Microsoft Excel tutorial. In this video, we're going to cover three of the basic counting functions, count, count a, and count blank. We'll kick off with a quick look at how to count a list of numeric values, and then how to do the same thing using the count a function to count text values. We'll show how to use count blank to count empty cells in a range, and then at the end of the video, show you how to combine the count functions with the unique function to count unique numbers and unique text values. So let's get started. To get started, I've created a workbook containing a big list of films. As usual, if you want to follow along with the video, I'll drop a link in the description below so you can download this same file and then use that to follow along with me if you'd like to. So this video is all about counting values in Excel. Admittedly, it's not the most exciting topic, but it's a good introduction to the basics of the, the count functions and sets us up for doing some slightly more interesting things in the next video involving the conditional counting functions. So the first example I'd like to perform in this video is I'd like to count how many film IDs there are. And to do that, I'm going to add a, a formula to cell C3 using the basic count function. So I'll say equals count and then open up a set of round brackets. Just like the other basic aggregation functions we, you may have seen in previous videos like sum and average, you can add up to 255 different individual sets of cells. We're just going to provide one set of cells there. We're going to point to cell A11 first of all, and then hold down control and shift and tap the down arrow key to highlight essentially the entire column of filled in cells. I can then close the round brackets and hit enter, and then we'll find out we've got 3,400 values in that column. In this video, we're going to be using several different columns of this film table to perform our counts, and it's going to get a little bit tedious if each time we do that, we have to highlight all the cell references in the column. So just to save a little bit of time, we're going to create some named ranges for the columns in this table. We've got several videos on working with named ranges in this playlist, which go into quite a lot of detail, so we'll just cover the basics for this video. I'm going to start by selecting any single cell that belongs to the table, and then I'm going to press Ctrl and A on the keyboard to highlight the entire list. What I'm then going to do is head up to the Formulas tab in the ribbon and choose the Create From Selection option. There are a couple of different keyboard shortcuts you can use to do the same thing. As you can see, there's one listed there, Ctrl and Shift and F3. When I select that option, a dialog box appears asking me, where are the names I want to create? And it's picked out two options for me, the top row of the selection and the right column. Now, my names are only in the top row, so I'm going to uncheck the right column box and then click OK. And now I've got a name for every single column in this table. One quick way to find those is to use the name box just next to the formula bar above the worksheet in Excel. If I click on the drop down arrow there, you can see we've got a named object for each column in this table. So if I select Film ID, you can see that it highlights the entire range of cells comprising the Film IDs. The advantage that gives me when I'm creating my formulae, if I just remove the formula that I entered in cell C3 previously, is I can say equals count, and then instead of selecting the cells, I can just start typing in the name of those cells. So I call them Film ID. Once I can see that name highlighted in the list, I can hit the Tab key to insert the rest of the name, close the round brackets and hit enter, and I get the same result, just with a little less effort. So we've already counted our film IDs. For the next example, I'd like to count the film titles. So in cell C4, I'm going to say equals count, and then I'm going to reference my title range name from the list. I close the round brackets and then press enter, we get a slightly odd result, four. Now, just looking at that list, I'm pretty certain there are more than four titles in that column. One feature of the count function is that it only counts numeric values. So it doesn't count text, it doesn't count errors, it doesn't count empty strings, just numbers. And as it happens, there are, well, there must be four films in this list whose titles consist of just numeric values. I suppose if we scroll down far enough, we'd be able to find one. There we go. So the, the film 300, its value is just a number. So that one's being counted. So what if we wanted to count all the values in that column, whether they're numbers, text, errors, or anything else? To do that, we can use an alternative function called count A. So in cell C5, we're going to say equals count A. 
and then in the round brackets we can say title once again close the round brackets and hit enter and we've got all 3400 film titles counted It's probably worth mentioning that when I say the count function only counts numbers, that does include date values as well. In Excel, a date is just a number with a fancy format attached to it. So if we wanted to count our release dates, we don't need to use the count a function. We can use the count function to do that. So we can say count, then I can refer to my release dates column, close the round brackets, hit enter, and we'll get that same result once again, 3400. For the next example, let's count the number of budget values in column E. So we're going to do that in cell C7. We can say equals count, open up some round brackets and then reference the budget dollars range name. If we close the round brackets and then hit enter, we don't get our familiar 3400 result. The reason for that is that the budget dollars column contains lots of blank cells. I just quickly select the top of column E and press control and the down arrow key. That'll take us to the first empty cell in that column. So I, there simply wasn't enough information available on Wikipedia to fill in the budget for every single film. So the count function, as we mentioned, doesn't count blank cells. There is a function that does count blank cells with a really inventive name. You may have already spotted it in the list. If we head to cell C8 and say equals count blank, and then refer to the budget dollars column there, close the round brackets and hit enter. That counts all the empty cells in that column and add those two numbers together and we get our familiar 3400 result. This is kind of handy where if we wanted to say, work out the percentage of missing budgets. Once we've got the number of missing budgets, we could divide that by the count of all the films. So just really simply, we could say count blank budget dollars divided by and then we could say count film ID, close around brackets and hit enter. And that gives us the percentage of missing budgets in that column. So both the count and the count a functions simply count the number of values in a range. They don't care about whether those values are duplicated. But what if it was important for you to find out the number of unique values in a range? We can do that by combining the count functions with another function called unique. So for the first example, let's find out how many unique film IDs there are. Now, the point of an ID column in database design terms is that each value in that column should be unique. So what we're expecting to return here is the same number as the total number of film IDs. So let's do this in cell G3. I'm going to say equals count. And then inside the count function, we're going to insert the unique function. Unique is a relatively new function in Excel. You need to be working in Excel 2019 or later to have access to this. And it's one of the dynamic spilled array functions that we've covered in previous videos. Inside the unique function, I can then reference my film ID range, close two sets of round brackets and hit enter. And there we go, the expected result of 3,400, telling us that indeed each ID number in that list is unique. Let's try and apply that then to the runtime column. I'd expect the runtimes to be a little less unique. There should be many duplicates of each runtime minutes. So let's head to cell G4 and let's just begin by counting the number of runtimes in total to establish that we do indeed have 3,400 values. Now we can edit that formula and inside the count function, we can wrap the unique function around the list of runtimes. We'll then need to close an extra set of round brackets for that function and then hit enter. And there we go, we've reduced the count of 3,400 down to just 136 unique values. You can also combine the unique function with the count a function if you want to find out how many unique text values you've got. So we already know that there are 3,400 film titles in total. If we want to find out how many of those are unique, in cell G5 we could say equals count A, and then insert the unique function inside there, and then refer to the title range name. Close two sets of round brackets, and there we go, 3,296 unique film titles, so 104 duplicates. The more duplicates you have, of course, the smaller the number will be. We can take that to an extreme, I suppose, with the certificate column. There are very few film certificates in this list, although there are 
there are 3,400 values in total. If we wanted to see the list of unique certificates, let's just quickly create a column to do that or a, a title to do that. We'll say equals count a unique. And then we can say certificate. Close a couple of sets of round brackets and hit enter, and we'll find out there are just six of them. You may have watched the previous video on working with the unique function, so you may remember that you can actually write out the list of unique values into a set of cells, providing you have enough space to do that. So as long as I've got a, a set of six blank cells here, we could say equals unique, and then refer to the certificate column, close the round brackets and hit enter, and the results of that formula will spill into the neighbouring cells. And there you can see the six individual certificates in that column. So there you go, there's a brief introduction to the basics of counting values in Excel. As I say, not the most exciting topic you'll ever encounter in Excel, but it sets us up for the more exciting things we can do with the conditional counting functions in the next video. Thanks very much for watching, and we'll see you next time.